Welcome to our video today on similar figures and indirect measurement. So the activity you did in class today was kind of a discovery activity, but now let's put some definitions and some background behind what we saw. So basically we have some definitions we need to get out of the way. Polygons that are similar have the same shape. They're different sizes, but they're the same shape usually. Um, if shapes are similar, they have parts that match called corresponding parts. So we'll talk more about that as that goes on. Corresponding parts, that, that word's a very important word today. Corresponding angles are congruent. And if you remember what congruent is, same size, same shape. And corresponding sides are proportional. Well, that takes us to what's a polygon. Well, I've got a little definition up here for what a polygon is. And you use polygons all the time. A polygon is just an enclosed figure. Okay, so here's our first problem that we're going to talk about. I've actually color-coded the corresponding sides. So these are two triangles. Your corresponding side here is in the green. It's the height with the height. Then you've got your base in the red. So your base and your base. And then I've got the diagonal, which is also, you'll learn later, called the hypotenuse, um, is also that side there. But remember, also, you'll find out something else about the hypotenuse that may not be part of this. But just remember the diagonal is this part here, and you've got your corresponding sides. So I've set up our proportion here, and I've made our descriptions as our base and our height. If you remember that we've been using the tic-tac-toe method, we've got base and height, and I've got the ratio of triangle number one, which is NOP, and then triangle number two, which is XYZ. I've got base and height, and then I just go in and fill out my numbers. The base of the first triangle was four, the height was 3, and then my other triangle, I had the base at 6, and the height we didn't know. So if you're using the equation here, you could set it up and you could do the cross multiplication. 3 times 6, 3 times 6 is 18, equals the 4 times x. So remember, we're isolating that variable. We're getting x by itself. So 18 divided by 4 equals x. And if you divide that out, we find out that the missing part, or the missing part of the height of our triangle here is 4.5. So this x is 4.5. Okay, the next problem is dealing with rectangles. We have the first rectangle, ABCD, and the second rectangle, EFGH, and again, with my descriptions, I did base and height. So you can look at your rectangles and you can find your corresponding sides. You can even color code those when you're doing problems. So the base of the first rectangle is 16. The height of the first rectangle is 12. And then my second rectangle, the base is 12. And my height is something we're trying to find. That's what x is. So I set up my equation, 12 times 12, when you do the cross multiplication, equals 16 times x, so 12 times 12 is 144, divided by the 16, which I think I may have done that incorrect. There should be a 16 there instead of a 6. And then you know what? That answer is not going to be correct because I wrote down the wrong number. So you would do 144 divided by 16, and you're going to get the answer. So check your answer to see what you've got. Tell me about that tomorrow. Okay guys, so now we're going to talk about something called indirect measurement. And indirect measurement is basically something that you use to measure things that is just difficult to measure directly. The best example I can think about is if you're measuring tall objects such as a tree, a building, or a flagpole, and it's not practical to use a ruler. If I ask you to go out and find out how tall one of the trees is outside, you're not going to get a ruler and scale, you know, and climb the tree to figure out what it is. You're going to use something called indirect measurement, and we'll talk about what that is here in a second. So instead of using, I'm sorry, instead of using the ruler, we're going to use indirect measurement, which means we're going to measure it, but not directly. And this is going to use proportions and similar triangles to measure distances that would be difficult to measure directly. So basically what we're saying is that we're going to figure out a way to measure those things that are impossible to measure with just a ruler. Okay? So our first example, and it perhaps is our only example, is talking about, let's say, we've got a flagpole here, and if the sun is shining on the flagpole, it creates a shadow, okay? And then if we have a meter stick that's standing also outside, that is also getting a shadow that's being created, okay? 
So these triangles are similar for a couple of reasons. One, because this right here is a right angle. This right here is a right angle because we're assuming that it's standing perpendicular to the ground. Okay? And the distance from here to here, these angles are also congruent. So these are, con these are uh, sorry, these are similar triangles. So now what we're going to do is we're going to use our similar triangle rule to figure out what the missing sides are. So we've got our pole and the shadow of the pole. We've got our stick and the shadow of the stick. So now we're going to set up our word ratio. We're basically comparing the height and the shadow of the stick to the height and the shadow of the flagpole. Okay? So the height of the stick was 3 and the shadow was 4. So we're comparing 3 to 4. And then the height of the flagpole was x, because that's what we don't know, because it's difficult to measure the pole, but we can measure the shadow, which is 18. So this is our word ratio set up. Then we're going to do cross product. Well, actually, here's our proportion. 3 fourths equals x over 18. We do cross products and get 3 times 18, which is 54, and 4 times x, which is 4x. And then when we solve, we come up with 13.5 as being the height of that flagpole. Now the thing to remember with this, obviously, if we were truly trying to get the measurement of the pole, this might not be exact, but it's going to be pretty close. Okay? Okay, as always, we're going to go over more of this in class and get a little bit more in depth. Um, but what you need to do is read your summary questions, make sure that you really think about them and answer them in complete sentences. Come in tomorrow uh, to class with any questions or concerns that you have, and we'll get to work. Thanks. Have a good night.